Well, happy holidays! Happy holidays! And welcome to our HistoryHighlights.com Holiday History Trivia Game! The Holiday History Trivia Game! I didn't know we had our own theme song. I just made it up. That was perfect. That was great. <laughs> so we've got, uh, what, 20 questions? 20 questions. 20 questions My for name you. is Laura. Oh, yeah. And this is Bill. Hey, I'm Bill. I figured we'd introduce ourselves. We, we figure everybody knows us by now. Most but. people probably do, but just in case you don't. New folks are discovering us every day. That's right. And a chance here to test your knowledge about holiday trivia, holiday history, and hopefully just learn a little something along the way. So grab a sheet of paper, grab a pen or a pencil, fix yourself a hot beverage or a toddy. Or a cold one. <laughs> Whatever you're in the mood for. Whatever you're in the mood and for. And any time, of course, because you're watching this on video, you can pause if you need to think a little bit longer about the question. You can rewind and revisit the questions later because we are going to correct our papers at the end of the quiz. That's right. So we're going to ask all the questions. We'll do one through 20. Let you put down an answer, take a guess. It's all multiple choice, so it makes it easier on you. And then we'll go back and we'll grade our paper and we'll all learn a little bit about the holidays as well. Absolutely. Are we ready? Are we ready? Number one. What year was the first Macy's Parade? The famous Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Did that begin in A, 1920? Or B, 1924? Or C, 1930? Or D, 1934? A, 1920. B, 1924, C, 1930, D, 1934, pick A, B, C, or D. When did Macy's parade start? Question number two. What Christmas-themed ballet premiered in St. Petersburg, Russia in 1892? Wow, that's a long time ago. What ballet? Was it A, Swan Lake, B, Sleeping Beauty, C, The Little Match Girl, or D, The Nutcracker? A, Swan Lake, B, Sleeping Beauty, C, The Little Match Girl, or D, The Nutcracker? All right, on to number three. What traditional Christmas decoration is actually a parasitic plant? Doesn't that sound festive? Mm -hmm. Is it A, a poinsettia? Is it B, mistletoe? Is it C, holly? Or is it letter D, amaryllis? A, poinsettia, B, mistletoe, C, holly, D, amaryllis. Is it poinsettia or poinsettia? I've always said poinsettia. It's not correct, but... It it's... could be poinsettia. It could be <laughs> poinsettia. You know, Tia... In Spanish is ant, and I'm an ant, so maybe it's the pointed ant. The pointed ant? <laughs> the ant to the point? I don't know. Read them number four. Number four. Which president of the United States refused to recognize Thanksgiving? How dare they? Which president? There must be a story there. Mm-hmm. A, James Monroe. B, James Madison. C, John Adams. Or D, Thomas Jefferson. So this mm. is going way back. It's one of the early guys. One of the early guys. All right. All right. So James Monroe, James Madison, John Adams, or Thomas Jefferson refused to acknowledge Thanksgiving. Outrageous. Number five. Which president gave the first official proclamation of a national Thanksgiving holiday? Was it A, Abraham Lincoln, or B, Ulysses S. Grant, or C, Teddy Roosevelt, or D, Millard Fillmore. A, Abraham Lincoln, B, Ulysses S. Grant, C, Teddy Roosevelt, D, Millard Fillmore. How are you doing so far? I'm doing real good. <laughs> you know all the answers. <laughs> Six, Twas the Night Before Christmas was originally published under what title? Ah. The poem, The Night Before Christmas. Twas the Night Before Christmas, specifically. Was it A, originally A Visit from St. Nicholas? B, Up on the Housetop? C, Happy Christmas to All? 
or D, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. Hmm. So, Twas the Night Before Christmas was originally published under a different title. A, A Visit from St. Nicholas. B, Up on the Housetop. C, Happy Christmas to All. D, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. Number seven. Revelers in Spain traditionally eat something right after the clock hits midnight on New Year's Eve. Mm. What do they eat? What is it? Is it A, 12 olives? Or is it B, 12 chestnuts? C, 12 grapes? Or D, 12 slices of pizza? Now we've got a party. That sounds like a bellyache. <laughs> this is a tradition in Spain. Right as the new year begins, the 12 olives, that's A, B, 12 chestnuts, C, 12 grapes, D, 12 slices of pizza. Take a guess. Moving on to number eight. Number eight. According to folklore in some European countries, what horned figure punishes naughty children at Christmas time? <laughs> wow. It's a scary, scary, scary figure. Scary holiday tradition. Yes, yeah, scary Santa. All right, is it A, Befana, B, Dead Moros, or the Snow Demon, C, Yulbak, or Yul Goat, D, Krampus, A, Befana, B, Dead Moros, or Snow Demon, C, Yulbak, or Yul Goat, or D, Krampus. I'm glad you had that one. That was a hard one. <laughs> Lots of hard things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. What well-known Christmas tune became the first song ever broadcast from space <sighs> back in 1965? <sighs> was it A, Jingle Bells? Or B, Joy to the World? C, Silent Night? <laughs> Or D, Blue Christmas. A, Jingle Bells. B, Joy to the World. C, Silent Night. D, Blue Christmas. That's a fun one. Lots of good options. <laughs> Number 10, we're halfway there. What does the word Hanukkah mean? What does the word Hanukkah mean? Is it A, Unity? B, Dedication? C, Clarity or D, everlasting. The word Hanukkah is a Hebrew word for A, unity, B, dedication, C, clarity, or D, everlasting. Number 11. In what modern day country was St. Nicholas born? The real St. Nicholas? The historical okay. figure that St. Nicholas was born in what modern day country? Was it A, Greece, B, Albania, C, Turkey, or D, Bulgaria? Hmm. A, Greece, B, Albania, C, Turkey, D, Bulgaria. All right, number 12. What holiday is a cultural celebration beginning December 26th and lasting for seven days and was modeled after the first harvest celebrations in Africa. Hmm. Is it A, Kwanzaa, B, Mabasa Carnival, C, Karamu, or D, Umoja? A, Kwanzaa, B, Mabasa Carnival, C, Karamu, or D, Umoja? You got all the hard ones. International I like here. saying those words. It's fun. Umoja. Lucky number 13. Did you know that America has an official national Christmas tree? Really? Where is it located? Right here. It's <laughs> <laughs> a pretty good one. A, in the Tongass National Forest in Alaska. Ooh, B, in Muir Woods in California. Beautiful. C, in Kings Canyon National Park in California, mm. or D, in the Roosevelt Cedar Grove in Idaho. Mm. A, Tongass National Forest in Alaska, B, Muir Woods in California, C, Kings Canyon National Park in California, or D, Roosevelt Cedar Grove in Idaho. Where is the official national 
Christmas tree of the United States of America. All right, number 14. <laughs> Which president received a raccoon as a Thanksgiving gift? Well, that's a tradition that's faded away. <laughs> I saw that one didn't stick around. Which president got a raccoon for a Thanksgiving present? Was it A. Warren G. Harding, B. Calvin Coolidge, D. C. Teddy Roosevelt, or D. Harry S. Truman? It couldn't have been any really modern day, like now presidents, because I don't know how that hmm? raccoon would have got through Secret Service. <laughs> a. Warren Harding, B. Calvin Coolidge, C. Teddy Roosevelt or D. Harry Truman? You'd have to go through a pat down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'd like that very much. <laughs> All right, number 15. In what country did the song Silent Night originate? Hmm. Silent Night originated in what country? Was it A. in Germany, B. in Sweden, C. in France, or D. in Austria? A, Germany, B, Sweden, C, France, D, Austria. Where did Silent Night originate? On to number 16. If you had lived in ancient Persia, what gift would you have given out on New Year's? Hmm. I thought this was interesting. Ancient, ancient Persia, the gift for New Year's was either A, tobacco, B, eggs, C, wine, D, pomegranates. Was it A, tobacco, B, eggs, C, wine, or D, pomegranates? That's a wide list of options. That sounds like a party to me. <laughs> <laughs> we should start a new New Year's tradition. <laughs> Number 17, here we go. In the song, 12 Days of Christmas, what is given on the seventh day? Day seven of the 12 days of Christmas. Think through it in your head. Sing through it. Was it A, geese a-laying? Was it B, lords a-leaping? Was it C, swans a-swimming? Or D, bills a-talking? A, geese a-laying. B, lords a-leaping. C, swans a-swimming. D, Bill's a talking. They should be so lucky. I snuck that one in on him. <laughs> How many Bill's a talking? How many Bill's a talking? <laughs> one is enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Number 18. What Native American tribe did the colonists share an autumn harvest feast in 1621 in Plymouth, Massachusetts? And this is acknowledged as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations. It's right. often thought of as the first one. So we're looking for the Native American tribe. Yes, that right. the colonists shared the meal with. Was it A, the Wapanoag? B, the Nipmuc? C, the Penacook? Or D, Seneca? I get all the hard words, don't I? Yeah, good A, job. A, Wapanoag? B, Nipmuc? C. Penacook, D. Seneca. So the tribes, uh, so choose the one that had the first Thanksgiving, the alleged first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims at uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And we'll move on to number 19. Which retail giant back in 1939 came up with the original idea for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Mm -hmm. Which retail giant? 1939, came up with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Was it A, Macy's, B, Montgomery Ward, C, Gimbel's, or D, Higby's? Hmm. A, Macy's, B, Montgomery Ward's, C, Gimbel's, or D, Higby's? And finally... We're to the final question. Oh, by so fast. 20. Old Lang Syne is the song most associated with New Year's Eve. Who wrote the lyrics to mm. Old Lang Syne? Was it A. Robert Frost, B. Robert Burns, C. Sir Walter Scott, or D. Irving Berlin? Who wrote 
the lyrics, the words to Old Lang Syne, was it A, Robert Frost, B, Robert Burns, C, Sir Walter Scott, D, Irving Berlin. Oh, I'm excited. Hopefully by now you have 20 numbers down the page <laughs> and 20 letters sitting out beside it. Mm. So let's see how you did. Ready to grade your papers? You can trade with a neighbor there at home if you feel like you can't trust yourself. It's the honor <laughs> system, all right? Absolutely. Number one. What year was the first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? What year? You should have put down letter B. That was 1924. 1924. So to celebrate their expansion to their new Herald Square Superstore, Macy's announced its very first big Christmas parade, they called it. They announced it, by the way, two weeks before Thanksgiving. This was in 1924. They promised magnificent floats, bands, and an animal circus. It was a huge success. So Macy's made a few good alterations. Number one, they trimmed the parade route from six miles, can you imagine, down to two miles, and they signed a television contract with NBC to broadcast the now famous Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The first oversized balloons that we all think of when we think of the parade, that started only three years later in 1927. And did you know that they used to release the balloons? And if you found one, you could bring it in for a special treat in wow. Macy's. I yeah. did not know that part. I, I don't think they could get away with that anymore. It's not a good idea. They're so giant now. I don't think they were quite as big back in those days. Yeah. All right. So that was B. Number one was B. Number two, what Christmas-themed ballet premiered in St. Petersburg, Russia in 1892? Of course, that's The Nutcracker. D, The Nutcracker. Alexander Dumas Pierre's adaptation of the story by E.T.A. Hoffman was set to music by Tchaikovsky. It was commissioned by the director of Moscow's Imperial Theaters in 1891 and premiered a week before Christmas in 1892. All right, D the Nutcracker. Number three, what traditional Christmas decoration is actually a parasitic plant? Mm. And that is letter B, mistletoe. <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> I, I'm gonna start carrying it, carrying it around. <laughs> so mistletoe was an important part of uh, Celtic and Norse religion. It became intertwined with Christmas traditions, but no one really knows exactly how the kissing tradition started. One possible origin was associated with fertility among Druids, mm. and some say there's a connection with Norse myth myth mythology. Easy for you to say. <laughs> mythology, in which Frigg, the goddess of love, promised to kiss any creature that passed beneath an evergreen sprig after it was used to revive her son Balder from the dead. But we do know that this tradition of kissing under the mistletoe spread from servants of Victorian households to the upper classes of Victorian society and has spread almost all around the world. Thank heaven for mistletoe. Those Victorians. I those crazy Victorians. I wouldn't have had very many kisses when I was younger if it was not for mistletoe. <laughs> Number four. Which president of the United States refused to recognize Thanksgiving... Believe it or not, it was Thomas Jefferson. That's letter D. Famously, the only founding father and early president who refused to declare th days of Thanksgiving and fasting in the United States. Unlike his political rivals, the Federalists, Jefferson believed in a wall of separation between church and state. Mm -hmm. And he believed that endorsing such celebrations as uh, a president would amount to a state-sponsored religious worship kind of thing. So he he looked at Thanksgiving as a religious holiday. Hard and fast. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, we'll cut him some slack, I guess. Number five, which president gave the first official proclamation of a national Thanksgiving holiday? Well, the actual answer is A, Abraham Lincoln. That was in 1863. Lincoln called for an annual Thanksgiving celebration on the final Thursday in November. I will tell you, though, requests for a national day of Thanksgiving began as far back 
as the victory over the British in the Battle of Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Also in 1789, George Washington called for a National Day of Thanks on the last Thursday of November to commemorate the end of the Revolutionary War and the ratification of the Constitution. Again, during the Civil War, both the Confederacy and the Union issued Thanksgiving Day proclamations following major victories. So that's been going on for a long time, but Lincoln was the first one to bring it in. Uh, and there was actually a debate over when. And that's right. when I wish they would have maybe moved it. It's too close to Christmas. I agree. Too 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 much going on in too short a period of time. Yeah. I'd love like a, I don't know, what do you think? Like an early October? Well, then we got Halloween there too. Halloween. Got to find a month that doesn't have a holiday maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of holidays, aren't there? <laughs> there are. Oh, that's well. true. August. August? Sure. I could eat turkey in August. I would eat it <laughs> anytime. All right, on to number six. Twas the Night Before Christmas was originally published under what title? That is A, A Visit from St. Nicholas. Hmm. It was anonymously published in 1823. Now, it has been attributed to and claimed by Clement Clark Moore, but there's actually some controversy as to whether he actually wrote it. Hmm. I'm going to guess maybe his wife really wrote it. He was it. up on the housetop. Huh? This, is, this is usually how these things go. <laughs> Let's do number nine here. This is Revelers number in... Number seven. Oh, excuse me. Number seven. Number seven, Revelers in Spain traditionally eat something right after the clock hits midnight on New Year's Eve. What is it? It's letter C, 12 grapes. Grapes. Right at midnight, they eat 12 grapes right as they begin their, the new year. It's a tradition and a superstition there in Spain. Rare is a Spaniard who will risk... Poisoning their fate for the coming year by skipping the grapes. One grape for each stroke of midnight. That's why there's 12. And that's a good luck to start off. Did you ever have a lucky food? Lucky for food New for New Year's? No. In the South, we eat black eyed peas. Oh, right, right. That's always a big New I Year's I don't know day. of one in the North, but I like the grapes idea. Yeah. And black eyed peas, actually, I remember knowing, goes way, way back as well, hundreds of years. I'm That's sure. That's a tradition in many cultures. You know, I like the grapes idea because, especially if you take the grapes and you make them into wine. Yeah. You probably, for 12 grapes, they'll have to drink the whole bottle. <laughs> uh, on New Year's Eve. 12 think... glasses of champagne. Well, that's... <laughs> wow. That would be a lot. That's a holiday. <laughs> All right, moving on. And number eight. According to folklore in some European countries, uh, this figure, horned figure, punishes naughty children at Christmas time. I'm all for it. That's <laughs> D, Krampus. Man. Hey, look out. Krampus is coming for you, Bill. sounds scary. I know. I think there's even a horror movie about the Krampus. The Night Before Krampus. We need to write that. <laughs> Now, believed to have uh, originated in Germany, this is a half-goat, half-demon monster of yeah, legend gosh. that punishes misbehaving children. I'm sure this was just used by many parents to scare children. His name derives from a German word, uh, Krampen, which means claw. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> it was thought to have been part of pagan rituals for the winter solstice, too, so there's a relation there. And the, here's the deal. The creature, Krampus, and St. Nicholas actually arrive on the evening of December 5th the legend says. And while St. Nicholas rewards nice children by leaving them presents, Krampus beats those who are naughty with branches and sticks. Wow. This is like a nightmare. <laughs> so then on December 6th, you'll know who the naughty and nice children are. The nice children have their presents and the naughty ones are nursing their injuries. <laughs> wow, gosh, dark. There's got to be a Krampus horror movie. Sure. There be. is. Is there already? There is, okay. yes. Okay, there must be. <laughs> How about something brighter? Uh, number nine. Oh, what well-known Christmas tune became the first song ever broadcast from space? That was in 1965, and it was letter A, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. is the correct answer. So this was Gemini 7. It launched on December the 15th. On board were Tom Stafford and Wally Shearer who did a rendition of this holiday classic. Wally played it on the harmonica, and Tom accompanied him on a small set of sleigh bells. The two astronauts had prepared for the performance by attaching dental floss and Velcro to the instruments so they could be hung on the wall of the spacecraft <laughs> when not being used. It was the first musical interlude from space, and Stafford and Shearer donated the instruments to the National Air and Space Museum in 1967, 
They are on display in the Apollo to the Moon to the Moon exhibition uh, in the museum there in Washington D.C. Jingle bells, letter A. <laughs> Out of this world. Number ten. What does the word Hanukkah mean? It is the Hebrew word for dedication. So B, dedication. Of course, the holiday commemorates the triumph of the Maccabees in reclaiming their temple from the Syrian Greeks. Hanukkah lasts for eight nights to commemorate how long the, the oil in the lamp lasted. The holy light burned for eight days. Dedication. Damn. Number 11. In what modern day country was St. Nicholas born? Well, it's kind of a trick question. He was of Greek descent, mm -hmm. but he was born in Patara, which is now Turkey. Turkey is the answer, letter C. Uh, he was of Greek descent, but he was born in Patara, in modern day Turkey. He lived in the fourth century. He was famous for his generosity and gift giving. He has been known to be the patron saint of many different things and people, including sailors, children, wolves, pawnbrokers, merchants, archers, repentant thieves, prostitutes, brewers, pawnbrokers, unmarried people, and students. Doesn't that just about cover it? <laughs> that pretty much covers it all. I love the unmarried people and students. <laughs> <laughs> His reputation evolved among the faithful. His legendary habit of secret gift giving gave rise to the traditional model of Saint Nick Santa Claus. That was Turkey. Letter C is the answer. Turkey is a good answer for any holiday question. That's right. Opinion. When in doubt, <laughs> guess Turkey. All right. Number 12. What holiday is a cultural celebration beginning December 26 and lasting for seven days and was modeled after the first harvest celebrations in Africa? And of course, that's Kwanzaa, a Kwanzaa, which was created by Dr. Milana Karenga in 1966. The name Kwanzaa comes from the Swahili phrase meaning fruits of the harvest. And Kwanzaa is rooted in the African culture. However, people from all racial and ethnic backgrounds are welcome to join in the celebration. Number 13. Did you know that America has an official national Christmas tree? Where is it located was the question. The answer is C, Kings Canyon National Park in California. This is a 2,000 year old tree, a giant sequoia called the General Grant Cree tree. It's 270 feet tall, one of the largest trees in the world. It was made the nation's official Christmas tree in 1926 by President Calvin Coolidge. Uh -huh. Look that one up. It's a beauty. All right. Uh, back to a president's question. 14. Which president received a raccoon as a Thanksgiving gift? <laughs> and you just mentioned Calvin Coolidge, and that's who it was. Calvin Coolidge in 1926 received a very odd Thanksgiving gift of a live raccoon. It that's, came. That's an odd gift. It came from a man in Mississippi who sent it to the president for him to eat. But apparently the president was a real animal lover. Listen to this. They made it into a pet. They named the raccoon Rebecca. I guess it was a girl raccoon. <laughs> And it was in addition to their already interesting menagerie of animals, they had a black bear, a wallaby, and a pygmy hippo named Billy. That's too cute. Billy the hippo. A little zoo at the White House. I, apparently so. I love this. I've got to look up some pictures of that. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, number 15. In what country did the song Silent Night originate? Letter D, Austria is the correct answer. So the lyrics were written by Joseph Moore in 1816. The music was composed by Franz Gruber in 1818 in a small town of Obendorf bay Salzburg in Austria. Before Christmas Eve, Moore brought the words to Gruber and asked him to compose a melody on guitar for the Christmas Eve mass. You see, the river had flooded and the church organ had been damaged so they were doing a backup plan and trying to arrange something that would work on guitar. There's another great story about this beautiful song you may have heard of, uh, kind of a Christmas miracle. During World War I, there was an impromptu Christmas Eve truce and the soldiers all were singing carols back and forth to each other. Now, because this was a popular carol in both English speaking areas and German speaking countries, both sides knew the song and both sang it in their respective languages. 
that has been turned into a magical holiday uh stage event mm -hmm. a great play a musical called all is calm if you ever get a chance to enjoy that it it's is really special beautiful all men's voices a cappella singing it's gorgeous all right number 16 if you lived in ancient persia what gift would you have given people on new year's that would be eggs always a good gift i think so and you know they gave it because it was a symbol of productiveness sure i mean think of it however you want productiveness is so at least on new year's we know which comes first the egg yeah. we finally have an answer to begin the year it's the egg i suppose number 17 <laughs> in the song 12 days of christmas what is the gift that is given on the seventh day Seven, Seven swans, swans a swimming. swimming. Not Bill's a talking. <laughs> Not Bill's a talking. Uh, letter C is the correct answer. Twelve days of Christmas, the swans. So there have been a lot of variations in the lyrics over the years. Some include uh, eleven badgers baiting. I thought that was a good one. Nine <laughs> bears a beating. Bears a beating. Uh, also came across uh, calling birds was originally collie birds. Uh, collie meant black, so it's just black, black birds, birds they were referring to. Uh, I also thought I'd throw in, I came across this one while we were looking all this up. There's a website that every year calculates the total cost of all the 12 things of Christmas, paying a average wage to the dancers and singers and milkmaids sure. and you know, all that kind of thing. And it's usually been a little over $40,000 to get all of those. But they're saying that this year the price has dropped greatly. Uh, below thirty thousand oh. dollars because you can't have ten lords a leaping. Nope, that's not a good idea. That's right. <laughs> can't can't have eleven. Le ladies, nine ladies dancing. Nine ladies dancing. Anyway, there's a bunch of them that all the big group ones they took out this year, so it made oh. it a lot a lot cheaper. Although if they added in b bills of talking, that's true. We'd have to pay you up. You can still get that virtually money. online at historyhighlights.com. You can't get some of it for free. You gotta get a commercial <laughs> in, absolutely. Number 18. What Native American tribe did colonists share an autumn harvest feast in 1621 in Plymouth, Massachusetts, acknowledged as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations? And that is the Wampanoags. Now, the, the Wampanoag Indians uh, were the ones that did have the meal with the Plymouth folks. But did you know some historians, I'm sure you know this, argue that actually Florida, not Massachusetts, may have been the true site of the first Thanksgiving in North America. It was 1565, Holy so mackerel. 60 years before the one in Plymouth, that a Spanish fleet came ashore, planted a cross in a sandy beach to christen the new settlement of St. Augustine's, right? right? To celebrate the arrival and a safe arrival and to give thanks uh, for God's providence, the 800 Spanish settlers shared a festive meal with the native Timucuan people. You know, a meal as a celebration, especially around harvest season, mm. has been around for a long, long Very time. Very common. Number 19, which retail giant in 1939 came up with the original idea for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I admit, I would have gotten this one wrong. It's actually B. Montgomery Ward. Yeah. I would have guessed Macy's all the way down the line. But Montgomery Ward wanted its own Christmas book to hand out to kids during the holiday shopping season. So the task fell to one of their copywriters. His name was Robert May. He took inspiration from his daughter's love of the reindeers at the zoo oh. and his own childhood where he was a small, shy kid who was never invited to play sports. Oh. He worked it all together, made it into a nice little story. More than two million copies of the original Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer illustrated book were distributed in 1939 alone. Wow. And the character instantly became a beloved part of American Christmas folklore, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Montgomery Wards, I 1939. That. That's such a wonderful story. Yeah, good one. All right, the final question, 20. Old Lang Syne is the song most associated with New Year's Eve. Who wrote the lyrics? That would be Robert Burns. Scottish, Scottish writer Robert Burns wrote the poem that became Old Lang Syne in Scotland in the year 1788. 
It was set uh, to the tune of a traditional folk song. And uh, Old Lang Syne means for old time's sake. For old time's sake. I think we should sing it to close out this trivia. All right. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot in days of old Lang Syne? For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll drink a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. We hope you guys are cherishing this season. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope you got a bunch of questions right. Uh, if you have not yet, we have a wonderful holiday show available that you can come over to historyhighlights.com and find a link through to and uh, enjoy a musical show to celebrate the holidays. Uh, also, we will, if you soon, if not right now, <laughs> have a holiday sing-along, a caroling, and we're gonna put the lyrics yes. up on the screen and just sing some good old holiday songs. That's coming out as well. So be sure and check in with us for more holiday celebrations. Our virtual cruises. Absolutely. Are so December 19th is the, the departure date of both of our holiday version of our uh, virtual cruises. We have the Columbia and Snake Rivers virtual cruise and an Alaska Inside Passage virtual cruise. And of course, you can find out about all of these wonderful things at historyhighlights.com. Register your email. You'll get a few emails from us here and there letting you know what's happening with us and uh, lots of fun, free content to enjoy. We just would love to stay in touch with you. And feel free to email us at bill at historyhighlights.com. Thanks for joining us for holiday trivia. Happy holidays, everybody. Mm -hmm.